Hello. So the purpose of this video is to explain how you can um, take a screenshot of your site and make sure that your lot satisfies the constraint of um, the wind farm must be not more than one square mile. So if you're looking at Google Maps and you've done your analysis with the wind maps or websites provided to you, you might have identified the site that you want to put it in. And for example, you identified um, your site somewhere here. So you can zoom in. And you must also be thinking of um, resistance on such wind farm. Uh, that they don't probably want it to be in their backyard, okay? So that's why wind farms are not really close to cities um, or even towns. So um, if, for example, this is your site, okay, you will drop a pin, and this is your um, location coordinates, okay? Uh, and you wanted to identify now the size of your lot, okay? So in the previous... Um, Tutorial, we can right click, measure your distance, and you can create your lot. Okay, and when you close your points, it will tell you that this is 2.95 square miles, which is really big. Okay, so we need to make some adjustment. Now, it's also uh, advisable to switch your view into like a uh, uh, satellite view or terrain view. So if we click terrain, we will see here uh, a representation of the terrain because uh, you might land um, your location on like, um, if you close this, it will be erased. You might have uh, put in your location like on this area over here and you might have uh, mapped out an area that is uh, on a mountain. Okay, so if you've done something like this, uh, this is 1.9 square miles and it's in the mountain, so you know that you have to like probably change that. Okay, so you're generally going to be the same in the same location, but maybe somewhere over here. So we're going to like close this and drop the pin and then put in your. Uh, Drop a pin and then right click and then measure distance and then um, put in your measurement. You can move your existing squares. Okay. And if you wanted to make it a square, uh, you can make it a square. And that one is not even uh, one mile, right? Uh, it is a total area is 19. So when you have something like that, you can adjust that. We can adjust that. Let's just see. I'll reconnect that. And it'll tell you what the total area is. Okay. And you can continue to like, uh, move this uh, location somewhere here and reconnect that. Okay. Uh, make sure that it connects. Now it's 1.31. So that's going to be too big. So you may need to readjust now. your points okay that's very close to one square mile probably need to readjust this again and that one is exactly one square mile okay so that one you probably need to zoom in a little bit okay and when you zoom in you see that oh there are like these roads over here okay um, so these roads uh, you, uh, are uh, typically um, uh, in uh, in the area that cannot be moved or cannot be changed, so you probably need to re revise again. So there are a lot of things that um, <clears throat> that will affect your your uh, chosen site, and roads uh, are one of them. Okay, so as you can see here, I am revising the shape of my lot because it's not always a square. And then I'll click a new one here and then return my over there. Now it's 1.29, so I need to adjust 
my area 1.14 I'll be adjust again now it's kind of rectangular 1.03 and maybe one more adjustment and now it's um, 27 million eight hundred twelve thousand nine hundred eighty four square feet okay so uh, that's not a square mile okay so you can get that information and then start a um, Google and then convert square feet to square mile and then square foot you can remove that and then paste that and you'll see that this the 27 million 812,984.28 square feet is actually 0.997653533987 square miles and that one will fit the constraint of your project okay uh, so because your project um, is constrained where it says that the size of the site must be no more than one mile uh, so once you have uh, the correct location and map um, you do want to take a picture of this one very close to this uh, to this corner here so we need to move that somewhere here and the reason behind that one is uh, Google map provides a scale of what a, a 2,000 feet looks like okay so all you're going to do is uh, take a picture of this one using your um, um, clip uh, or take a screenshot using shortcuts okay so I'm gonna take a screenshot of this location right um, Oh, I forgot to oh and then I can put in um, that information on my document okay uh, now I don't have a um, exact GPS coordinate yet but um, what I can do now is I can uh, click and put in my uh, GPS coordinate somewhere here in this in in the center or wherever uh, but I have to close first my my distance okay I have to close me because if I click then that's what's gonna happen All right so I have to close first my distance and then I'm ready to now drop the pin okay and then that's gonna be in Kern County okay uh, if you want to take a picture of this one uh, use your screenshot tool again uh, and then once you've copied that go back to your document and then paste that there so you can see that's where the road is okay and that's the shape of the lot that's the area of the lot and that's 0.997 um, you can you can add words here in the bottom uh, you can say that this is 0 0.997 square miles okay which you will need information on at a later date um, because the next step on this uh, project is to fill out your wind farm data okay so on this wind farm data it's gonna ask you how many uh, turbine um, or wind, wind turbines you can fit on your lot uh, and it depends on First, the wind rating of your area, okay? Because if you chose a um, uh, this this turbine, then it's rated for a 15 uh, uh, meters per second, and uh, if your wind area is uh, 20, then this uh, this wind turbine can't handle it, okay? Uh, at the same time, the cheapest one, 1.3. Uh, is uh, rated at 14 and so if you have like a 16 or 17 meters per second then this this turbine can't handle it okay so you have to choose which one depending on your uh, wind data 
and then you have to know how many you can fit so if you try to fit this uh, you have your uh, distance between each of these um, turbines is equal to three times the height so here's the hub height so if the distance is uh, or if the height is 223 then one turbine to the other okay would have to be spaced out three times as tall as this height okay so once you know that then you can uh, figure out how many um, of these will fit here by doing a short calculation so once you have taken screenshots of your location and adjusted the size to fit like a one square mile uh, with your location in your coordinates you will now need to fill out the uh, next stage which is how many turbines can you fit in your in your um, chosen area so as I explained it depends on your wind speed rating so let's say you wanted to put a 1.3 megawatt um, turbine on it and the spacing would be three times uh, the hub height of 223 and three times the hub, by the hub height of 223 is 669 okay so if we think about uh, that spacing if I have a turbine here and another turbine here the closest distance I can put them together is 669 feet and it also goes this way 669 feet so if I have that restriction, that means that this square, okay, is the, um, you can only put one turbine within this square. And this square will be 669 by 669. So in order for you to determine um, your, uh, how many turbines can fit and, and how, what, how you can answer this is you have to figure out how many of those squares that you have here will fit in your um, in your lot okay so here's the here's the area of your lot or chosen site and you know that one square of one six uh, of 669 by 669 is just one turbine you should be able to calculate that one and um, put in the number here Okay, and then if you do your math, you should be able to tell uh, well, how many um, turbines will be here and multiply that by the capacity and that will give you your uh, output. Okay.